Hello, Dear in a Club. This is Andy Licht, live at Big Bad Con, and I am sitting down with Aaron Lim. Aaron, for people who don't know you, would you like to introduce yourself and what you do? Yeah, hi. Uh, I'm Aaron Lim. Uh, pronouns are he, him. Yeah, I'm a game maker based in uh, uh, Petaling Jaya, Malaysia. Uh, and uh, yeah, I make games. Uh, I make games such as uh, An Altogether Different River and uh, Spectres of Brooklyn, both of which were founded on Kickstarter. And uh, I do most of my stuff on itch.io. Um, yeah, that's me. Sweet, that is so you. Yeah. Um, how do, okay, so Aaron, how did you initially get into tabletop role-playing games? What brought you to the hobby, to the medium? Yeah, so I actually originally, when I was like 13, 12, 13, like I was interested, like I, I can't rem even remember how I found out about it, but I was interested in um, like figuring out what Dungeons and Dragons was, but we couldn't figure it out because we were just trying to learn it straight from the pirated books. Yeah. Um, uh, I actually printed it out. Like I went to a local printer and had it like printed out yes. fully in black and white and like was trying to figure it out with a friend, but we could not make head or tails of it. Uh. There was no actual play. We couldn't find the forums. Like all the stuff that we found didn't make sense. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I didn't, like I just, okay, I, I guess I can't figure this out. Like, mm -hmm. And then I ended up, you know, uh, playing other games. Like I got into like, trading card games, I got into board games, um, and then years later, uh, um, I started listening, so during the rollout for D&D 4th edition, mm -hmm. um, they started rolling out podcasts uh, that like uh, were doing, like, were, were early actual plays, um, well not early, the early actual plays were like text actual plays, Okay. Um, but um, were the early like podcast stuff, so I actually finally got to learn how D&D uh, and tabletop RPGs work through that uh, and I listened to a few different podcasts and some of them uh, were playing indie games as well they played um, they were talking about games like Microscope and uh, Fate and sure. um, uh, I think the Quiet Year might have been out already by then um, I think so yeah yeah, yeah. and so uh, so I got into like like learning a little bit more. Like I'm really thankful that I didn't get like stuck in that. That like the people that I listened to were playing widely. Right. Uh, and so so I got into like other indie games as well. Incredible, nice. Yeah, yeah I can so relate to printing out the D and D manual at your local game shop. And I'm I, I think a lot of people also learn how to play through actual plays. You know, it's like you got to see it kind of to I learn hear it. it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. So in addition to. Um, uh, indie RPGs. I know you're also uh, an avid indie video game um, fan, player, and part of the community. Uh, how does that relate to your uh, work on um, games and tabletop games? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know whether I would say part of the community. I guess I, I know a bunch of like indie video game designers. Mm -hmm. um, Sounds but... community to me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but but the thing I'm 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 really like thankful for and like forms a really formative part of like my thinking about games and game design uh, is the Free Play Independent Games Festival. Uh, I lived in Melbourne for like I'm, I'm back in Malaysia now, but I lived in Melbourne for about like 14 years okay uh, and the free play independent games festival was something that was like super important super formative for me um, seeing the people there like talk about like indie games and games game design uh, practice as like artistic practice in addition to like commercial practice totally uh, and also because free play treats games widely like games is a, a, a an art form uh, in it and medium uh, that is a wide definition of the genre uh, so even in the free play independent games festival like conference track they would have architects they would have like theater people they would have tabletop game designers uh larp designers all mm -hmm. those kind of people were all kind of like mixing together uh and like sharing um knowledge and enthusiasm about the art form of games yeah. so I... that was like super important to me yeah, I love that. I mean, it's also interdisciplinary between LARP and tabletop yeah. games. And yeah, someone, I, I know uh, Harry Lee, uh, Lee Changlon, uh, uh, used the term anti-disciplinary, right? Like, oh. the, the disciplines are uh, fake and, <laughs> oh. and you don't need to think about them. You should work against discipline. I love, okay, so maybe we're putting up borders when we shouldn't be. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about some of the games that you've put out. Um, uh, what is, for people who don't know, what is an altogether different river? Yeah, uh, so an altogether different river is a uh, storytelling game about uh, creating a place and seeing how it changes over time through the lens of people who left it and returned uh, and the people who stayed throughout. Um, uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> just, that's that's what it looks like. And there it is. Um, yeah, you can show it off to this camera too if yeah, you like okay. over here. Yes. Okay. No way. Awesome uh, looking book. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The 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 uh, artist is a local artist from uh, from Malaysia. Uh, Vanessa Tang. Uh, she does really great work. She did. Yeah. Um, and yeah. So so that's what it's about. Uh, you. It, it's about seeing places change over time, right? Like it's called an altogether different river because there's a saying you can't step into the same river twice, right? Right. Okay. Um, yeah. And what and what um, inspired the game then? Was it a real life experience you had, or a piece of media? Yeah. So it was a real life experience because uh, I I lived in in Melbourne for like fifteen years, uh, uh, for fourteen years, and then like moved back to Malaysia. So it's like that was from personal experience. Sure. Um, and like grappling with like dealing, grappling with like all the feelings and and. Um, uh, yeah, just just grappling with the feelings of like moving back home and seeing how everything has changed and like who who you are and who uh, who what that place that like felt like home to you like what it is now. Yeah. Um, that's definitely something that was like really personal, uh, and in fact, actually, like an altogether different river is a, um, is in a way a failure of a game or like a failure no. to like initially make a game. Um, sure. Because I initially when I left uh, Melbourne, I made a small zine called uh, Home. Bound, um, okay. that had a bunch of games about home and going away, uh, and and altogether different river was always meant to be like a game that slot into that um, that anthology, mm. uh, and I didn't finish it. I couldn't finish it, and then it's like okay, it made sense that I finished it when I, I only finished it when I moved back home. Um, oh my gosh! Yeah. yeah, that works out in a very poetic way. Yeah, 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 for sure. And also, I think it's such a human experience to see things change and see yeah. yourself change alongside it. Um, yeah, I would love to play that sometime. Yeah. Uh, you have another game out, which is Spectres of Brocken. And yeah, I can show that too. Yeah, I mean, I the game looks awesome, the art looks awesome, and yeah. also mechs. So, yes. yeah, what is Spectres of Brocken about? Yeah, so uh, this one, the art, art is by Amita Savalaraja, again, another uh, artist from Malaysia. Weirdly enough, um, I did not plan this, but both of them are from Malacca, uh, uh, in, in a state in Malaysia. Okay. Uh, I just so happened to, like... <laughs> Find, find people who huh. like live near near each like in the same state. I would um, keep getting artists from there. I suppose. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it's working for They're you. They're really cool. Um, yeah, so this is a game about uh, being a young, um, impressionable, like mercurial uh, mech pilots, getting to know each other, getting to know what you want from the world, uh, and then you times and, and like getting to know um, what you want from each other as well, mm. uh, and then you time skip some years into the future and like. You're full on like professional mech pilots now, and you're all on different sides of the war, and you have to fight each other and kill each other. Um, is there, the Spectres of Bracken have happy endings, or does it have bittersweet endings? Uh, tra tragedy is uh, kind <laughs> of like the name of the game, I think. <laughs> <laughs> we love we and we love our tragic tragic games here, of course. Yeah. Yes. Interesting. Okay, so. Uh, I'll let you enjoy the rest of the con here, Aaron. Also super stoked right. to play Spectres of Brocken sometime. I just have one more question for you. Thank you. Which is, what advice would you give to uh, new designers or to uh, a younger version of yourself as an artist or a designer? Ah. Um, like, embrace failure or, like, embrace, like, messy things. Um, like I, I think I took a long t it took a long time for me to like start making games uh, because like I was worried about like oh I want to get it right I want to you know make a good game and so um, I put together different versions I didn't really play test it um, and like they kind of lived uh, in my head right mm -hmm. um, and then I only really started like really developing and developing uh, in a way that I felt really good about once I started play testing it and like. Um, um, getting out of my own head and just like, okay, fine. If it sucks, it sucks, right? Totally, um, yeah. Uh, like not letting myself take, like, okay, if I suck today, maybe I won't suck tomorrow, right? I will believe in the version of myself in the future to be a better <laughs> game designer than I was today. Yes, um, and, let, and letting yourself fail, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and leaning into it and totally, totally. Yeah, um, yeah I think that's marvelous advice for sure. Kill your darlings, <laughs> uh, just make it and fail and try again, you know? So, um, yeah, uh, if you would like to be found online, yep. Aaron, where can people find you? And what, and what should they look out for um, th uh, that you're creating or anyone else's work? 
Yeah, so uh, I'm uh, at Aaron Lime, uh, E-H-R-O-N-L-I-M-E, uh, on most social media. Uh, I think pretty much uh, like Twitter, Blue Sky, um, Instagram. I don't use all of them as much, but... Uh, sorry, I don't use all of them evenly, but <laughs> like if you want to find me, like uh, use the same, same handle anywhere. Sure. Uh, I will have some stuff coming out again s- soon uh, next year. I'm doing a new edition of uh, What We Have Tomorrow. Ooh, uh, okay. Hopefully. Uh, and uh, uh, a new edition of Ithaca and the Cards, uh, which is another game that I had put as part of the Homebound. Uh, so yeah, that's what I'm working on. Uh, and you can find me on itch as well, E-H-R-I-N-L-I-M-E dot itch dot I-O. Sweet. Yep. All right. We'll put those social links in the description as well as your itch. And everyone, um, definitely pick up uh, both of Aaron's games and look forward to the two second edition, the revised yeah. editions coming <laughs> out in the future. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, No, Aaron. thank you so much for having me. Thank you.